with roots dating back to board track and beach racing in the early 1900s, and decades of epic battles between the top motorcycle manufacturers, American flat track is America's original extreme sport. This year, the American manufacturing heavyweights of Harley-Davidson and Indian Motorcycle are once again going head-to-head -head on the racetrack. American Flat Track has crowned a champion every year since 1954. But now the sport enters a new era. It's time for the battle to begin. Two to go in the 2017 American Flat Track Championship, but you haven't completed a real championship run unless you visit the Lone Star State. So here we are, the Lone Star Half Mile presented by Indian Motorcycle in Fort Worth, Texas. Texas Motor Speedway right next door. So you know this is a place that's gonna be filled with a lot of great racing fans. A battle is on in our singles class. Shayna Texter still trying to cling to her title hopes as Brandon Price keeps closing on your series points leader, the guy we're now calling Mr. Consistency, Colby Carlisle. No wins this year, but he does have the points lead. And again, this is the next to last round. In our twins division, Brian Smith second in points, but Jared Mees has already wrapped up the championship. You know that Smith would like to beat his teammate today and get a small measure of revenge for handing the number one plate over. Jason Wigand alongside Scotty Dubler today and Heather DeVoe patrolling the racetrack as always. Could be a celebration run for Jared Mees, a historic fourth championship for him. Jared Mees trying to make history. Indian motorcycle, he could clinch the championship today. With the other championships that I have, I've never clinched it early. I've always had a mathematical shot at losing it at the end of the year. I left last year very bitter. I got beat, my hands down got beat. To first be a winner, you have to hate to lose, and I hate losing. Getting on the new bike, getting on the same equipment as Brian Smith, I came to every race more focused than I ever did and put way more into my program physically and mentally than I ever have. Things have been shaken up massively here. Jared Mees has been leading this race, and more pressure on Jared Mees to try to get this done. When I was uh, seeing the five to go, and I looked back and I had a pretty good lead. I went, all right, there's a red flag going to come out. There is no way that I'm gonna get handed this championship. Boom, as soon as I started thinking, there was a red. And then there was multiple reds and you tense up more because the track was definitely getting drier and slipperier and harder to ride. Fortunately, we were able to get good starts multiple times. Knees, perfect on the entry to that one. This might make all the difference. Jeremy is gonna win the race and the 2017 American Flat Track Twins Championship. I'll be honest, I never thought I'd come into the season winning, you know, nine wins and clinching the championship with two races to go. We were able to just put it together this year, week after week and race after race. Big hats off to my crew, obviously, because they were able to provide me uh, good running motorcycles that lasted every race 25 laps. and and we were dominant at every race. It's the thrill of victory. There's nothing better. That's why we do this. We come to win races, and uh, but most importantly, we come to win the championship. Winning it, clinching it when we did, it was awesome. It was a big thrill for everybody. I give all the credit to my team, my wife, Indian Motorcycle. It was no doubt a team joint effort. Born and raised in Pennsylvania, East Coast Pennsylvania, but never actually raced Williams Grove. To go there in front of my friends and family and see people that I went to high school with show up there and clinch that championship and also win the race, I mean, I couldn't ask for a better moment for myself. I was able to give Hayden, my daughter, and my wife, Nicole, the victory lap in my hometown race. It's been great being able to be here and support them and bring our daughter with us, you know, that's now four months old. He always says, you know, that's his good luck charm. So it's really cool that we get to incorporate her into our lifestyle and be able to support him like we do. In my opinion, there's nobody else like Jared. This year with the Indian, it's just came together like a story. Just our whole team gels so well. It's been a record-breaking year for myself on, on multiple levels. It was a lot of firsts for me, a lot of firsts for Indian Motorcycle. The scary thing for me is that I don't know if I can ever repeat such a historical fun year. You know, it's almost like, man, anything less than what I did this year is going to be a little bit disappointing. But at the end of the day, we did it, and not many riders and racers have ever done what we've done. We'll go back next year and try to do the best we can and try to hit our marks. 
Scotty, it's been an amazing season for Jared. Jared's tied for the most podiums in, in history with the worst finish of third, except for Lima, where he didn't qualify. Yeah, unbelievable for him, and that's a brand new motorcycle, so congrats to them. Here's Heather with breaking news. Thanks, Jason. We're here at the Lone Star Half Mile, which is the home track to newly crowned crew chief champion of Kenny Tolbert and the number nine of Jared Mees. Jared locked up that championship at the last race, but he's looking to get yet another win here tonight. But the big news of the day is the number six of Brad Baker will not be racing because he broke his jaw in a mountain bike crash earlier this week. Our very own NBC analyst Larry Pegram will be filling in for him and we'll find out more from him later on how that Indian is running. Jason? Yeah, Larry and I were hanging out at a trade show on Friday to get a phone call and he had to head to the airport to ride Brad Baker's bike. Scotty, thanks for coming and filling in. This should be interesting to see how he does. Well, it worked out good for me. I got a phone call Friday night also and said, hey, you want you want to do the voiceover for NBCSN? I said, heck yeah, let's go. All right. Well, you know what this track is all about. You're there calling the action. So tell us what it's like to race at the Lone Star Half Mile. This track's very cool. I would call this sister track to the, to the Charlotte track. It's just exactly configured the same. It has a little bit different dirt. It's a darker, rich black dirt where Charlotte has red dirt. Uh, I would say it's banked the same. It's a true half mile around the inside of the racetrack. It's super fast. And we had great racing at the track similar to this at Charlotte earlier in the year. So we're looking forward to that. Here are your point standings coming in. We mentioned Mies has already wrapped up the title. Sammy Halbert's going to have a shot to reclaim third in the championship now that Brad Baker is out. And you also want to watch Briar Bauman, who has really been rallying late in the season here with two recent victories. Here are your storylines coming out of qualifying today. Our first semi, a couple privateers who have been knocking on the door of those Indians this year up front. Briar Bauman, then he makes a bobble. Watch for Jeffrey Carver. Jeffrey Carver takes the bottom of the racetrack, stays on the group, and takes the semifinal win. All right, good to see some fresh talent up front. Not just Carver winning the semi, but Johnny Lewis, who's bouncing in and out of this series, was fastest in qualifying, backs that up. Second in the semi, had a Robbie Pearson Briar Bauman, Van der Koy, Albert Colbert. Let's go to our winner. Jeffrey Carver taking home the win here in semi one for the Twins class. Jeffrey, the 14 slipped up there a little bit. You were able to get by him and run away with it. You've been hungry for that main event win. Do you think based on that performance, you can get it done tonight? Yeah, since the first time we stepped on this racetrack today, I felt really comfortable and smooth. Uh, uh, I got the Gary Goodwin race in Harley, and uh, Ben Evans is tuning it, and uh, we're definitely going to go for that win tonight, and I'm really excited. Now, this is interesting with Johnny Lewis getting the fast qualifying time. It's a rare opportunity for Mies and Smith to end up in the same semi together, and they did not disappoint. A good battle. It was a great battle. Actually, Smith had, had a pretty good start. He got by Mies early, but Mies retaliates down the back straightaway. Mies has been so strong this year and keeping it on the groove, and he looked, all, looked good all the way to the finish. Yeah, pulls away from Smith at the end, so he had another semi win for him. Davis Fisher outduels Brandon Robinson for third. Larry Pegram's in the main event. He finishes sixth. Nice job, Larry. And Jay Maloney will take the final spot. And let's go to Heather with Jared Meese. Jared Meese taking home the win in semi two. Jared, this is Kenny Tolbert's home state. Did he give you some inside secrets? Because he sure ran away with that win there. No, he just came up and says, dude, you better win. It's my hometown track. <laughs> no. Um, you know, all day I kind of just felt a little off, but just feel a little timid just with the track conditions and stuff. And the track's getting a lot more um, consistent, and uh, it's time to get it on now. So we gotta we gotta dig down. Time to get it on in the singles class as well. Colby Carlisle holding the points lead. Brandon Price right behind him, and Shayna Texter still got a shot as well. Stay with us. American Flat Track on NBCSN is brought to you by Harley Davidson the official motorcycle of AFT Twins. And by American Flat Track, America's original extreme sport. And by American Flat Tracker Clothing Company. This is more than a sport, it's a way of life. Find your groove at AmericanFlatTracker.com. The rising stars of the American Flat Track singles class have been putting on a nail biter of a championship chase all year long. Brandon Price only 12 points back in Colby Carlisle. Shannon Texter still in it. Let's talk to Carlisle and Price. At this point in the championship, I got a little nervous on one day, and then I was like, why am I nervous? I'm just going to go out there and try to win the dang races. So that's where my mind is now. You know, I'm focused on winning a race. If I win the championship, that's awesome. If I win some races, that's even better. Uh, I just fast qualified for the first time ever in my total career. I'm really pumped on that. I'm riding super hard today, and I think that's going to pay dividends come main event. I'm feeling pretty good going into it. I mean, I'm, I've been consistent all season in these last two tracks. 
seemed like they fit me pretty well. I've been training a lot at my house and then uh, just riding every single day. I flew out to this one and then I'm flying out to Cali too, so uh, I'm gonna be training up all the way to the last day. The consistency was obviously key. I might not be the fastest rider out there all the time, but I'm consistently good across all four track types and that's what's kind of paying off. And then this championship takes a huge change right here. The 92 of Price and Carlisle tangle and Price down hard in the semi. Well, they tangle up coming right off the line. When you drop the clutch, the back tire lights up and those two touched right off the line. And then the riders behind them had absolutely nowhere to go. They were actually run over Brandon Price and his motorcycle. Unbelievable that Price was able to get back up on the restart and get fourth in this one. So he's still going to make the main. Jesse Janish, one of the veterans out here taking the win. Then semi two, Shayna Texter struggling all day, but finds her groove getting around Kevin Stallings. She was on a rail. She went around the outside of Stallings. Nobody has been passing anybody around the outside. She went the long way around, found the traction and made it into the lead. So Texter is going to win semi two and a great battle down to the line between Stallings and Morgan Mishler. So here's the results on those two semis. Dan Bromley just ahead of Carlisle and Price in semi one. And as you saw, Texter taking the win in semi number two. So our main event field is set. Now, Texter's mission is obvious. She has to outscore Carlisle in the main tonight or she's out of title contention. Let's talk to her. Shayna Texter taking the win there in semi two for the singles class. Shayna, you're still going to fight for that championship. You showed some speed out there. What is it going to take to get a win tonight? Uh, just trying to stay focused and uh, hit my markers every lap for 15 laps straight. Uh, the track's super slippery out there right now, and uh, you just got to be smart and not be too hard on that throttle. So we'll see if Shayna can stave off title elimination tonight. She's got to be Colby Carlisle to do it. Brandon Price trying to overcome some adversity and stay in it also. Stay with us. Nightfall greeting us now at the Lone Star Half Mile presented by Indian Motorcycle. This is American Flat Track and we are getting set. The rising stars for their singles main event. There's Shayna Texter, first qualifying spot in this main event because she had won the fast semi. Colby Carlisle, your points leader, and Brandon Price of the 92, second in the series. All three of those riders are going to duke it out. Anybody else to watch here? I definitely got to keep your eyes on Dan Bromley, the 62. He goes very good on these groove racetracks. Also, Cole Zabala starting in the, near the back. He might make his way towards the front. So here we go, 15 laps in our next to last round of this singles championship. It's all on the line. And a great jump for Jesse Janish, a huge hole shot. He had a great shot right off the line. Here comes Shane Texer looking at the high side around the long way around, just like she did in the semi. And we're on board with her, trying to make that pass, and she does edge ahead of Janish. So one of the few riders to make that outside work, and it's still getting the job done in the main. Very close competition. You see side-by-side -side action all the way through turns three and four. So a couple different lines coming in. As right, so we'd like to see a multi-groove racetrack, it's Dan Bromley on that 62, trying to work the low line on Janish and Colby Carlisle right there in fourth. A couple of veterans between Janish and Bromley. They've been racing for a very long time. They're now in the singles class, and they're trying to get up there and keep up with Shayna Texter. Yeah, she's actually starting to open it up a little bit. And those are championship spoilers for Carlisle, your points leader in fourth, and Texter up front. And I don't think Janish and Bromley could care less about the points. They just want to get on the podium, so they're not going to make it easy on the 36. Check it out, Jason. The 36 of Colby Carlisle's picking riders off one at a time, making his way up towards the front. Everything he can right now, making that move on Bromley. So he's up to third and now closing in on Janish. And they're side by side right behind Bromley also. Here comes Brandon Price. He's coming to the front. Woo! Getting aggressive. Now I have to wonder if he is hurting a little bit after that huge crash in the semi. This is all heart right now for the 92, the white machine. He's got to keep the 36 in his sights to keep the championship points battle really close going into the last round after this one. Carlisle in third here in the 36, trying to get Janish for second so we can close in on the leader, Shayna Texter. Look like Bromley's running the very bottom of the racetrack. Price trying to make his way around Bromley. There, there's a good battle of them going into turn number three. Again, they're going after the same bit of real estate. Price looking at the high line. Little mistake from Bromley there as he approached the exit of that corner. Price cannot take advantage. Morgan Mishler is next in line trying to get them. Good job by Janish here, not only fending off Carlisle, but keeping Texter in sight, although not for long. He slipped a little bit wide right there. Carlisle almost made the pass on the bottom of the racetrack, ran out of time before they got to turn number three. Really interesting to see how Carlisle will play this. He has been consistent all year, but he told us earlier today he wants to go for the win. How aggressive will he get? I'm not sure if he's thinking about championship or thinking about the winning. See his brake rotor starting to glow red just a little bit, using a lot of brake going in the corners, looking at the high side on Janish, setting up the pass possibly for the next corner. 
That made me wince, seeing how close he was to that wall. There was nowhere to go, but he made it work. He made it stick. He set up the corner. He went in high, dropped to the bottom of the racetrack, and came out underneath. Jesse Janish takes over second place. All right, I think it's fair to say now Carlisle is not points racing. He's trying to get to the front and try to get that first victory of the season. Well, he wants the first victory, but he also wants maximum points so, to, so he can take the championship away from anybody else at this race. Brandon Price in fifth on the 92 is still in contention. He's trying to make passes just like Carlisle is. You see Price right behind Janish and Bromley. Carlisle, he's running the high line on Texter. That was Texter's territory earlier. Well, I like it. He's learning. He's not following. He's trying to look for a way around. He wants to get around Shana and get the win. His first win of the season would be great. Got that rear brake rotor lit up. The guys drag that. That's basically the most rudimentary form of traction control. But that's all you've got on these bikes. They're two by two, Jason. Yeah. I mean, first and second and third and fourth are side by side. Yeah, Bromley and Janish, a great battle there for third. And that's not giving Price in fifth anywhere to go. They're hogging up all the good lines. Shane is still in the lead, but Colby Carlisle looking for a way around the outside with five laps to go. This is relentless pressure to deal with for five more laps. And Carlisle's got the line now. It's the same area he made the pass earlier. Back to the high side. He's going. He's got to go the long way around. Now he's going to try to set her up just like he made a pass earlier. And I don't think it's going to work for him, Jason. No, he was able to get around Janish with it, but not Texter. Now there's Price setting up Janish. Got a wheel down to the inside. Brandon Price looking at the very low line of the racetrack. He's trying to push Janish up the racetrack just a little bit. It's not able to make the pass. He set him up down here in three, and then one and two, also trying to do it again. He's on that Parkinson Brothers racing machine, trying to get around Janish, clinging to points. He's already down 12. He can ill afford to lose more to Carlisle with only one race to go after this. As for Texter, if she wins this race, if she beats Carlisle, she will stay mathematically in title contention going into the last round. If Carlisle beats her, she's out. So everything is on the line right now. A good shot off of Kobe Carlisle's rear fender. You can see the top two have gapped the field just a little bit. Dan Bromley trying to keep the leaders in his sights. Bromley jumped back into the singles division halfway through the year, and he has been a contender for podiums week in and week out. Don't count him out. He oh. can pass them both. Oh, Carlisle, I thought he had the move made. Well, Shana made a mistake. She kind of went up the racetrack a little bit. It just happened, so happened that 36 of Carlisle was right there, so he had to go up the racetrack also. He is now starting to run out of time. Texter has weathered this storm for about five laps. Can she do it with one to go? It's getting really close right now. I think he's going to have to go to the high side. He's going to have to try to go around Shane if he can make it happen. Oh, and you can see how rough this track is getting on the exits. Here we go. This is the spot where Carlisle was able to take over second. Is he close enough to make it happen for the win in the final corner? I don't think he's close enough to make the pass. Here he comes off the final corner to the straightaway. It's not going to happen. Texter, a clutch performance to grab the win here at the Lone Star Half Mile and prevent Carlisle from wrapping up the championship. But meanwhile, we have some big championship ramifications. Further back, Brandon Price was running a brilliant race, and it came undone right at the end. With two laps to go, going into turn three, the bike just loses power. He's coasting to a stop, and he parks outside turn four. He just watched his championship go away. Absolutely. Now he will be mathematically eliminated. And remember, he was coming back from a vicious crash in the semi. All that work literally goes up in smoke. Here are your results. Price 18. Here's Heather. Shayna Texter is your winner here at the Lone Star Half Mile. Shayna, you didn't make the last three mains, but you find yourself here with a win, which is, which is exactly what you needed to get yourself back into the championship. What is the plan going forward into that last race to maybe capture a title at this point? Yeah, I mean, you know, unfortunately, we had some bad luck at Williams Grove with a flat tire. And, uh, you know, everyone knows I'm not a TT rider, which definitely hurt us. Or, you know, we would have had this championship wrapped up weeks ago. But, uh, you know, unfortunately, we got to battle it out to the end. Um, it's going to be a I'm going to have to just go out to Paris and try and win and, uh, and hope for a little bit of luck on my side. Now, going back to that race, Colby was right on your tail. Could you feel him back there? And what was going through your mind when that was happening? Yeah, I mean, I definitely saw a, a blue front fender uh, pop up on me on the outside a couple laps. I wasn't sure if it was him or uh, Jesse Janis is also on a Yamaha going good today. So I just, uh, you know, I know my job is just to go out there and win and have some fun. And uh, whatever happens in this championship happens. But uh, we got five wins this year, so I'm so excited uh, for we'll see what uh, Paris brings and even next year. She snuffed it out there with two to go. Carlisle tried that high line. She got up there and stopped it. And by one point, She's not eliminated. Carlisle needs 17th or better in the final race. Price out of title contention now. Let's go to Carlisle. 
finishing second here in the singles class in the main event is Colby Carlisle. Colby, you still have the points lead going into the next race. I know you wanted that win badly. You were up against Shayna there for a little bit, but consistency has been key as we talked about earlier. So what's your plan in that final event? Make the main event and get 17th at least, you know. Um, yeah, for a second, my team was like, oh, you got it, you got it. And then I started adding math. I'm like, nah, I, I need one more point. I need one more point. But, you know, that's fine. Uh, we ran Shana down. You know, we had a lot of issues today. So my mechanic, Andrew Butler, worked through them. And I can't thank him enough. My dad and him worked together great. And we got the issues figured out. The starts weren't great today. We needed a little better there. And I think we could have won this thing. Uh, we kind of ran Shana down from a little ways back. But I had nothing to do when it came time to pass her. Just got to get 17th next round. And look at this. Across the line, he saw Price was out, and for a moment, he did think he had the title. Let's talk to third. Dan Bromley getting third place tonight and your third podium of the season here in the singles class. Just how crazy was that race out there? It looked pretty exciting from our point of view. I knew in the main event, everybody in the front row could win, so I knew I had to get a good start, and I uh, came around second, and Shana just went right around us like we weren't sitting still. I feel good to be in third place to end out the season. I won't be making the last round, but uh, I can't thank everybody enough for helping me out with my switch this year, and uh, my parents for all they did, and uh, my girlfriend Connor for uh, driving out here to Texas and making a good road trip. And pretty cool three brands, Honda, Yamaha, and KTM on the singles podium tonight. Brian Smith on his factory Indian had to hand over the number one plate after some disappointment last week. We're going to hang out with him at home and get to know last year's champ. American Flat Track on NBCSN is brought to you by Indian Motorcycle, America's first motorcycle company, a true legend since 1901. By E3 Spark Plugs, the official spark plug of AFT. And by American Flat Tracker Clothing Company. This is more than a sport, it's a way of life. Find your groove at AmericanFlatTracker.com. Well, he had to hand over his number one plate that he earned last year to Jared Meese, but Brian Smith is still a proud racer. And I think more than anything, he's proud to be pure Michigan. Swartz Creek's a small town just outside of Flint, Michigan. Um, you know, all the flat, flat track racers were born in Flint, Michigan, and uh, we've migrated just outside to the, the suburbs, I guess. And uh, here we are in Swartz Creek. Me and Scott Parker are probably Swartz Creek's biggest names, right, right underneath uh, some big band by the name of Grand Funk Railroad, 70s rock stars. I like being home. I'm a homebody, I always have been. Um, you know, I'm, I come back every every weekend after the race. Used to stay on the road a little bit, but I enjoy my home time and unplugging from the racing world so I can do it back here in the woods in Swartz Creek. My dad introduced me to motorcycles and Scott Parker was the guy that raced motorcycles. So um, I'm thankful for my dad getting me on a bicycle that led to a motorcycle and pushing me and giving me the opportunity to race. And then a guy like Scott Parker for coaching me along through my career leading me to be a racer and on to a Grand National Champion. The story I always tell is we lived in Flint, Michigan, crime capital of the country, and to keep him out of trouble, we got him into BMX racing, and I went to school with Scott Parker, and he went to a race when he was about eight years old, something like that, and he liked it, and we just supported whatever he wanted to do, actually. He was good at it right from the get-go, and what he's done is amazing. I mean, he's won multiple championships, X Games gold medal. I know it's a dream come true for him. It's definitely a dream come true for me and my wife and his sisters. Starting to get jealous though, because I went broke getting there and now he's making a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, I've known Brian since he was about this high and I was just a little higher, not a lot higher, but he was just this little guy hanging around, looking and going, someday I want to do that, you know, and just being a young kid and, uh, you know, playing around it. Hey, get out of that. You know, he was in trouble, you know, hey, get out. You know, he'd always want to tip our beers over or do something, just causing trouble. You know how it is, you know, and just thinking about him being in my garage one day and then winning the championship. Awesome. Woo! Training's part of my life, just like it is every racers. I like to keep it fun and uh, have fun with my buddies, whether it's mountain biking with good friends, Pat Buchanan and Ryan Wells, or, uh, you know, going to the gym and getting my butt kicked in there, it's all part of life, it's part of my everyday life. Every day I'm doing something to make myself a better racer. Nice. Brian Smith is Brian Smith. I mean, what you see is what you get, you know, and that's something that's awesome about Brian. You know, there's no guesswork, and it doesn't matter if you're the President of the United States or you're somebody that doesn't have much of anything. Brian's gonna treat you the same. You know, he's accomplished a ton, and at the same time stayed very humble and just your, your normal everyday guy. 
The season hasn't been bad by no means, but Jared's just having a better season. I'm pumped on, on this year. I want to do better. I want to win some more races. But overall, I'm stoked to be part of the Indian Wrecking Crew and uh, making history with Indian. Flat Track's headed in a great direction. I'm happy to be at the top of the sport. Well, the only direction I will question is this one. Indian has put Larry Pegram, usually my broadcast colleague, on Brad Baker's factory machine. How is this going to go? Let's find out. Heather talked to him earlier. Filling in today for the injured Brad Baker is our very own Larry Pegram. Larry, when did you get the call to come ride this Indian for Brad? Well, yesterday, you know, I was in the middle of heavy training for this event. I knew the call was going to come, that they wanted the best rider possible. Uh, no, I was... Uh, was this kind of luck? I was at a, a, an event with some of the guys from SNS. Paul Langley was there, and he said, "Did you hear Brad got hurt and he can't race?" And I said, "Well, don't they need a really fast rider?" And he said, "Yeah. Who are we gonna get?" And I said, "Well, that guy's not available, but I am." And so uh, they said, "Hey, yeah, come ride this thing." And uh, I'm just excited to come out here and have some fun again. It's it's kind of like getting to go back to school again and having a lot more knowledge. But uh, all these Indian guys are great and just having a good time. Now you raced the X Games earlier this season, but you really haven't raced much. So what challenges does it pose for you to get out of the booth and get on the motorcycle? The biggest challenge, honestly, is that I just have no time on the bikes. You know, I've rode X Games this year. I rode X Games last year. So that, and before that, I hadn't rode a flat track for a long time. So that's my biggest challenge. But the bike's so good that it makes it easy for me, to be honest with you. I, I get on it, and I just set on the thing, turn the throttle, and it goes good. So I just want to have fun today. I say that, but I want to do good as, you know, as well. Best of luck to you, Larry. It's good to have you down here with us. Jason, how do you think Larry's going to do today? Ah, uh, terrible. Sorry, Larry. All right, so we're ready for our main event, including Larry Pegram, and also maybe some spoilers trying to get in there and get some wins against the Factory Indians. Speedway is a pretty cool track. Uh, it's kind of like Charlotte on it in some ways, a little bit less banking. So we're going to see how it plays out over the night. It's going to be a little bit different once uh, get a little moisture on the track and we'll see what happens. Uh, so far, so good. It's, it seems pretty racy. I've seen a couple different lines, been able to pass people. So hopefully when the light goes green tonight, it'll be fun. Track, I mean, here it's a great facility. I think it's going to be good tonight. You know, it's been uh, it's been pretty hot here during the day. Hopefully, uh, once the sun goes down, it cools off a little bit. It uh, starts holding some moisture and then gets good. This is typically a track I like, and you know, if we're there, we're there. If not, hopefully it's a restart and, and I can get up there. I've been getting some good starts this year, so hopefully I can use some of that to my advantage. It's a cool track and a uh, cool atmosphere. You know, it's kind of like Charlotte. You know, hopefully we get uh, different fans and different people to come see us. Hey, we have a different rider in the mix here. Johnny Lewis here on the 10 has been bouncing in and out of the series this year. Picked up a brand new Indian and he's running up front. Heather. Joining me now is the number 10 plate of Johnny Lewis. Johnny, you're the first privateer to ride the Indian motorcycle. What do you think so far and how did this deal come about? Yeah, it was, uh, it was a last minute deal. We, I got the call on uh, Sunday night. I was actually in New Brunswick, Canada, putting a school together. And, and uh, uh, Dave Atherton called me on behalf of John Weiss, who owns the bike. And he said, hey, we just got a bike from the dealer. You want to go racing? And I'm like, yeah, let's go. You know, the bikes have been dominant this year. You know, they've been doing really good, but I think a lot of people wanted to see if it, you know, is the team, the riders, or is it the bike? And, you know, the bike has been pretty good today. Now you've ridden many different manufacturers. How does this one compare? You know, the, the, the power on this one's very smooth. Um, you know, and also what's nice is I kind of reached out to some of the guys and said, hey, what are the characteristics of this bike? So, you know, and I talked to Olean's with John Cornwall here, and I kind of had a platform to work with before I even got here. Even though it's my first time riding the bike, I had a really good uh, idea on what direction we needed to go start with today, and you know it worked out good so far. Speaking of power, you're the fastest qualifier. How are you going to keep that speed throughout the remainder of the event? Uh, you know, it's just getting good starts now. The track they've they've changed, they ripped it up, but the shape, the the, the surface, like the the texture of the dirt is kind of what I really like. You know, to have something with power, you know, handling good, kind of a whole package. I think I think we should be able to look pretty good tonight. Well, he has looked good so far. Fourth in the grid, because he's second in his semi, fastest in qualifying, he's on fire. Qualified well. I like kind of where he's starting down at the very bottom of the front straightaway. He looks really good tonight. Other riders to watch here? Man, you just got to keep your eyes on anybody. Anybody can win any week we go to, but look at Lewis down there at the very bottom of the race. Look at his eyes. He's very focused. You got me starting right next to him, the winningest rider here in 2017. 
And keep your eyes out for the wizard, Jeffrey Carver, the 23. He's gone back to the XR750 Harley Davidson, and he looks really good today. Yeah, won his semi going away. Davis Fisher also there with them in the 67, and Brian Smith on the one. Here we go. It's the Lone Star half mile, and our twins made of it. A little wheel spin there from Lewis down to the inside, and that's going to allow Carver and Meads to get the jump. Carver gets the jump and gets into the first corner first, gets into high gear where he wants to be, and he's out front, smooth sailing, nothing in front of him. Carver yet to win a race this year. Can he do it on the old school Harley XR 750 against these new Indians? He's got two of the good ones right there, Meads and Smith. He's already gapped the field by about five bike lengths. That's got to be a good feeling. He, I'm not sure he knows that already because it's very early in the race, Jason. And you see Smith right behind me. He's with the replay XD on board, battling it out for second and backing it in deep is Smith. These guys aren't used to being second and third. They're pushing it early on. They want to push it, get out front as soon as they can. Out front is the place to be. Oh, good battle here. Vanderkoy on the 20 on the outside just got zapped by the 14 of Bauman. And they're closing in on Lewis. We've had some good side-by-side -side racing throughout the singles and here in the AFT Twins. Vanderkoy on the 20 trying to pass back and get toward the front. They're all looking at these podium positions right now. Smith has it in third. Lewis on the 10 is fourth. Here comes Bauman. Right behind Bauman is the 27, or Robbie Pearson. He's also on the Harley Davidson XR 750. He's making his way towards the front. All right, it's a good racing right here, and it's a 25 lap main. So these guys are going to try to be aggressive, but you also figure they might be saving some lines, some strategy for later tough to get off that corner clean everybody bobbling it's a little bit slick coming off the corners you got to have really nice throttle control you don't want to just grab a handful because you'll light up that rear tire there's lewis in fourth smith getting away in third but Mees in second getting away from smith so the best battle right now is bauman trying to pass lewis johnny lewis right there on the number 10 privateer indian effort he has put a twin motorcycle seven different brands of twin motorcycles into main events and grand national competition that is incredible yeah that's a uh, record in the modern era to put seven different brands in a main event in the twins division good shot back right there at 94 ryan wells he's on the briggs auto.com 750 kawasaki and he was trying that low line trying to get around brandon robinson on the factory harley the 44 back up front jeffrey carver can you believe it starting to march away from our new champion jared Mees. this is a dream ride for the 23. he has a huge lead he's never won before in the twins class he has one win to his credit that's at castle rock back in 2013. so here it is ken the privateer and this is a low buck effort carver has said he's actually had to sleep in his van a lot at the races to keep the funds down will be a great way to supplement that income if you get the win tonight. But there is a long way to go when you get Jared Meese behind you. That's the bike he rode actually up at X Games, had a flat tire coming to the white flag. So he knows this motorcycle. He's ridden it before. He's been riding his own Kawasaki's this year, but he, he looked at the racetracks. He thought the XR750 would be the best bike to have at this particular track. And the XR750, that thing is legendary for that hookup, that traction. Do you think that's the key here? Absolutely. No wheel spin. Uh, get through the corners really strong. Get on the gas early. And no wheel spin coming off the corners, allowing you to move forward and not sit there and spin. And that has always been the conundrum of flat track. you got to go fast, but it has to be in control. And right now, Jeffrey Carver is in control of it, looking for his first win of the year. Can the privateer hold off the factory bikes? Stay with us. We've got some new blood up front here in the main event. The Lone Star Half Mile American Flat Track leading it. Jeffrey Carver, best finish so far this year. He has a lone podium finish with a third. He's trying to win this thing. And your standard battle behind him with Jared Meese, Brian Smith, Jake Johnson on the factory. Harley got the replay XD on board with him. Shows you just how difficult this track is. It's very difficult to get a hold of the racetrack and move forward. Like I mentioned just a little while ago, you've got to be real, you know, real, real easy on the throttle coming off the corners. You don't want to just grab a handful drive down the straightaways, throw it in deep into the corners and slide and don't drift off the racing surface, which is the blue groove. And a good battle here between Vanderkoy and Davis Fisher. This is seventh and eighth. A couple of young guns right there on Kawasaki's. Both of them are going to be names in our sport for a long time. They're making their way towards the front. They're trying to make a name for themselves and they're running really consistently this year. Yeah, a lot of people pumped on the talent that Fisher has shown through the years. Is trying to put it all together right now. Now you see that number five at Johnson where we had the onboard. Look who's challenging him, Here Larry come, Pegram. Here comes Larry Pegram on the 272 trying to make his way up towards the front. He said he wanted to get on the podium tonight. All right, maybe I need to give Larry more credit on these shows. The guy apparently does know what he's talking about. The starts, though, have been tough for him. He said he's working on a new technique. 
The start has been great for Jeffrey Carver. He got the edge on Jared Mees. But Mies is not going anywhere, Scotty. Yeah, don't count on Mies just yet, because Mies, he'll sit back there, he'll go to school. He's, he's a veteran of the series. He, he'll work his way up towards the front. He's going to try to track down the 23 of Carver. And I think he's gotten a little closer here over the last three or four laps. Uh, it be a heartbreaker if Carver can lead all the way to the end, only to have it stolen by Mies. But man, the way the number nine has performed this year, it's going to be hard to hold him back. Definitely so. Carver's real consistent, running smooth lines right there. Looked like he made one bobble right there just as I said that, but he's running very smooth out front. He probably can't hear anybody behind him, so it's really hard to lead the lap, hard to force yourself to go in the corner deep as you can each and every lap. Is Jeremy going to school? Yeah. Is he learning something? Does he have a strategy for the latter laps with eight to go to try to take? Carver's first win of the year away. Also, something else might be a factor, Jason, is we were already in some lap traffic. We've seen a few riders pull out of harm's way. Will that allow him to catch up? All right, we got Larry Pegram right here with the Replay XD on board, and he has actually pulled away from that battle behind him. So good job, Larry. Now into the top 10 in ninth. I'd say that's not bad for coming off the couch. I think Larry's goals for himself were a little more ambitious than that, but he looks good right now. I think it's great for him only racing once before this year. And he said he raced X Games last year. So for not having much dirt track in the past 15 years, he's looking really good. A battle brewing here. Brian Smith has gotten caught by Johnny Lewis and Briar Bauman. So it's a three rider duel for third. The 12, that's Jay Maloney. He's going a lap down, rider out of New Jersey. But this fight is on for the podium. Johnny Lewis might get the privateer Indian on the box. Johnny Lewis is tracking down Brian Smith. There's nobody in front of him, so it looks like he's actually racing for the lead. He knows that's one more spot up. He wants to get on the podium. A lot of people wondering how the store-bought Indian FTR 750 would perform obviously very well. It looks really good. He, they actually did nothing to the motorcycle. They went and looked at the suspension and brought it to the racetrack and threw Johnny on it, and look how strong he's running. Brandon Robinson battling with his Harley Davidson teammate Jake Johnson right now with the replay XD on board. This is for a shot at the top 10. They might have to duel with our own Larry Pegram to get in it as the laps begin to click off. And it still is going right for Jeffrey Carver. Jeffrey Carver doing absolutely everything he can to stay on the bottom of the racetrack, picking his foot up early, getting the traction to the rear wheel, driving off the corners and diving deep into the next corner. He looks like it's the same lap, lap after lap, doing very good, very consistent. Yeah, that was textbook there for Carver coming off of turn four. And I believe he's actually stretched it back out a bit on these. Yeah, Jared Meese not even in our shot right now. So Carver's on cruise control just a little bit. He's got to take it easy because he does, he does have some lappers coming up right in front of him. Back by Carver's barbecue sauce. Wow, putting Sammy Halbert a lap down. Halbert, a front runner in this series all year. A rough night for him. But Carver carving it up. The rider out of Godfrey, Illinois. On the Ben Evans racing machine, they switched to the old Harley XR in this one. And he is now two laps away from his first win of the year. Can he bring it home? It's been a long time since Jeffrey Carver's won. And a lot has to be going through his head right now. Stay smooth, stay consistent, and get by these lappers. Now he takes a look over his shoulder. He wanted to see where Jared Meese was. Oh, this is a track where it is so easy to make a mistake on this very slippery surface. Can he avoid the gremlins? Can he deal with the pressure? One to go for Jeffrey Carver. Last lap, now you're thinking about everything. What can go wrong? You're trying to stay focused. He's not even putting his foot down right there. He's trying to stay smooth and keep it pointed the right direction. No more looking back, it's time to win. Jared Mee's still lurking, but I think he's out of time. Jeffrey Carver against the big factory team is gonna get it done and win it for the privateers. What a dominant performance on the Goodwin Racing Harley-Davidson XR750 by Carver. Yeah, showing the old machine can still get it done. Again, this is a guy that was staying in his van at some races to cut back on the expenses, and he wins it tonight. And hey, Jared Mees, he didn't have to think about points. He threw everything he had at him to try to win this main event, and he couldn't close the gap. He finishes up second, and Johnny Lewis makes the pass on Brian Smith. So two privateers on the podium tonight. Larry Pegram, 10th. I'll tip my visor to that. Good job, Larry. But the best job, this man, Jeffrey Carver. He's been improving all year, but this is a major step in his career, getting his first win of 2017. American Flat Track on NBCSN is brought to you by Harley Davidson, the official motorcycle of AFT Twins. And by Replay XD, the official action camera of AFT. And by American Flat Tracker Clothing Company. This is more than a sport, it's a way of life. Find your groove at AmericanFlatTracker.com.
Here's Sunoco go the distance award standing. Sammy Halbert still on top. That is a calculation of all the miles turned every single lap all season long. But your big winner of the main event tonight is Jeffrey Carver. Nicely done. Here's Heather. Jeffrey Carver gets the win here at the Lone Star Half Mile. Jeffrey, it's your first ever win on a twin. Explain what that means to the fans to you. Oh, man, uh, I've had people support me for a long time. Won a singles race in 2013. And, uh, you know, I'm um, glad to finally get that, that, that win on the twin and just keep rolling. You know, I've had so many people behind me. And uh, this year, a lot of people have been backing me and stuff. And today's the 23rd. And uh, I believe in good energy and stuff. And uh, I'm just super stoked. I'm really happy. Uh, we decided we rolled the dice we showed up with one xr this weekend and uh it worked great and uh yeah i just stoked uh, just to really get up there and do it now jared mees told me after he went won his semi that you were going to be the guy to beat tonight how does that sound coming from the champion saying that he was going to have to beat you well my girlfriend actually texted me and told me that that's what he said uh, uh after his interview so uh it, it means a lot and um you know you can get flustered out there's a lot of laps especially leading every lap and uh i actually just slowed down as the race went on the track got slicker and i'm like may i change my line and stuff but um i just slowed my pace down and really tried being very very smooth and uh, tried getting through the lappers properly and uh, you know it's uh it means a lot to be able to beat a guy that's won you know nine races this year and uh, the champions out there and stuff so um, I'm, uh, I'm excited for it. you know we just keep building and uh, going to next year here's the most tool move of the race here is how the 23 got it done it has to be Jeffrey Carver getting off the line get into the gear he wanted to get into and he so smooth right up the line got in turn number one and Shut the door right there on Jared Meese, and he will take off from there. We'll see him lead it all the way down the back straightaway. He went on to lead all 25 laps, but the Motul move of the race was coming off the start into the lead. And it made all the difference. Jared Meese was about that close all the way through the other 24 laps, but could not close it down. He finishes second. Jared Meese coming up with another podium again this season. You've tied the most podiums so far in a season. If you get a podium next race, you'll have the most in a season. So just kind of cover, how are you able to get that done every week? Oh, you know, uh, just a great team and, um, you know, great worth it, work ethic on everybody's part. And, um, you know, we... Uh, didn't really start off the strongest guy earlier today, but a lot of it was just myself not really wanting to adapt quick enough to the track. And, you know, the track to me wasn't um, in the beginning was a little little tedious and I didn't really want to, you know, uh, put it out on the line quite yet. And then we made a couple changes for the semi and the track came around really good for the semi and the main event. It was good. And, um, you know, I, uh, I I pushed hard to try to get to, to Jeffrey. He just had about two or three quick laps in the very beginning to where he was able to kind of bridge out on me and I just couldn't really bridge the gap. And, and I was just kind of like stalemate around there. I tried moving around a little bit and I would push hard, mess up. He would mess up. I'd gain a little bit back, you know, and I think our, you know, if I had a guess, our lap times probably went pretty hand in hand, but he got the start and he ran consistent and pretty darn smooth. So uh, hats off to Jeffrey, man. He, he deserved it and earned it and got it done. Thanks, Jared. Thank you. Point standings again, Mies already has a title. Baker is out. Halbert has been struggling as of late. We'll note Jeffrey Carver moving up to six. Could be, should be a good battle for top five between him and Briar Bauman. One more interview. Let's go to Johnny Lewis with Heather. With his first podium of the season, finishing third is Johnny Lewis on the Indian as a privateer. I think you showed those guys that that, that bike has what it takes to get up front. Yeah, you know, it was... Uh... It was an interesting day. You know, we went out fast right away. I mean, the track was kind of my like, and I, I ride a lot of motocross, aggressive tracks that were kind of in, inconsistent. But, you know, so it kind of played in my favor no matter what bike I rode. But uh, as they got on, we just kept continuing to be fast and fast and fast. And, you know, we got second, 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 and then third, you know, throughout the qualifying and then main event. So I'll take a third place, you know, after it's been a while since I've been on the podium. And, uh, you know, it's good. It's, uh, it's kind of refreshing to get out there and, you know, get through the whole, whole day like that. And, you know, no, we're still, we're still there, you know, only doing selective races and, and stuff like that. So it was, uh, it was a rewarding day. Talk us through that last pass that you made on Smith coming off of four. Yeah, it was pretty good. I, uh, I knew it was a little, little better coming off of uh, turn two. So I just ran in into turn, turn one pretty hard, got in and kind of bumped him a little bit. I knew, I knew he wasn't going to do anything. I bumped him a little bit and I got his brain triggered because I was way faster coming off of four. Um, so I kind of got his, his mind going. He ran in three, just ran a foot wide, and then foot escalated to three foot, and I just drove right by, and I looked back, and I had enough room to pull a wheelie to, you know, to the finish. So, you know, it, was, uh, it takes, I, I do a training school, and I ride with a lot of people and ride behind them and watch and watch and watch, no matter how fast they are. And, uh, you know, that actually teaches me, 
you know, so I come out here, I'm studying those guys. It wasn't the fastest here at the main event, but, you know, I was able to study Brian and, and, and come out a little bit ahead of him. Well, congrats on a great run. Thank you. I appreciate it. Lessons from 10 Training. That's the name of his school. We'll be back for the finale from Paris, California, Thursday, October 12th, right here on NBCSN at 10 p.m. Eastern time. It's going to be a good show down there with more wins on the line and the singles championship still up for grabs between Shayna Texter and Colby Carlisle. For Scotty Dubler and Heather DeBow, thanks for watching the Lone Star Half Mile. Congrats to our winners, Shayna Texter and Jeffrey Carver.